your assigned project this week is a relief print. Now, when I talk about a relief print, um, what I mean is that any portion of the print uh, that is going to create the image is actually going to be raised. So what I, in this tiny little stamp here that I created for a birthday card, I um, cut out anything I did not want to be in my image. And anything that I did want to be in my image is flat and is untouched. So the materials you'll be working with are your lino cutter. Um, you will find all of these blades stored on the inside of your lino cutter right here. So the cap just twists off, the blades, all five of them go inside, and the cap goes back on. Each one of these blades is just a different size. So obviously the larger the blade, the bigger the area it will cut out of your stamp or your relief plate. <clears throat> So this one here is the smallest one. I personally like to use this one just for beginning cuts, for cutting around my line, and then of course the bigger ones for clearing out larger areas of space. This is the printing plate that we're going to be using. It's essentially an alternative to a wood block or linoleum plate. This one is the soft cut, spelled K-U-T, that I got from Dick Blick, and it's um, it's easier to cut into. Your knife is not as likely to slip on this one. Um, and it takes the transfer from the pencil really well. I've got the actual image that I'll be working with. I just took an old sketch, made a copy of it, and um, scaled it down to the correct size. The size that you guys will be working in is 4 by 6 um, I'm working in a smaller size just for the demonstration purpose. The size that I'm working in right now is 3 by 4. And then of course I've got my pencil. Once you've created your final image, just go ahead and photocopy it. And then on the photocopy, you can take your pencil and you can just trace over all of the lines. Now I'm using a mechanical pencil because it's just kind of easier for me and I can get a more precise line. But you can use a standard number two pencil as well. When I'm, when I'm tracing over the lines, and the same thing for when you're cutting with your lino cut, don't get your hand into awkward positions. Turn, turn your paper or your plate as you're working around so that your hand can remain in a comfortable position as it's going around. Otherwise you end up with weird sloppy lines. Okay. Well, and that was a weird sloppy line. Now I actually, so that you don't have to sit here and watch me trace over this whole thing, I actually went ahead and created this image just a few minutes ago. All of this is with graphite. I um, incorporated some extra patterns into it that I thought would be interesting as well as still trying to maintain a focal point. Um, I'm not sure yet exactly how it's going to look when it's finally printed. When, uh, when you're doing this, it's really important to go ahead and mark in where you want it to be black on your plate so you have a good idea of what your image is going to look like when you're finished with it, how the patterns are going to play up against each other and, and work together or in some cases work against each other. So when you know it on this portion, it's easier to adjust it in your early drawing than it is once you've got it on your plate. Now for this, I opted to keep all of my patterns in my image to begin with because I know that in my plate I can cut it out if I don't like it. Once I've cut it out, there's no putting it back in. So I decided just for my purposes, for experimental reasons, that I would just go ahead and keep everything in there. Part of the reason why I kept the wave pattern in the background as well is for one, I like a variety of patterns. I liked the way that the bubble pattern interrupted the wave pattern, um, but also it helps when I've got this wave pattern in the back, it helps to create 
to make this open space on the octopus's head stand out. So this is this is like the one space in the whole picture that's really clear and clean and doesn't have any pattern in it, which then helps the eye to kind of stand out, and then you've got a more established focal point here. If I were to get rid of the waves in the back, then I think that the tentacles would become the focal point because you've got very strong, busy patterns of light and dark stripes along with the circles for the suckers on the underside of the tentacles. So now I'm going to take my plate and I'm going to line up the edge of my picture. I think I may actually just cut off some of that edge. I can do that easier. I'm going to line up the edge of my picture with my plate here and then just lay it down on top. I'm going to hold it, I'm going to kind of flip it over, check on it. I think I like that. It looks pretty lined up. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rub all over the image everywhere. I'm going to give it a good rub all over it. Sometimes doing it with your thumbnail in certain areas will cause it to transfer better. Once I have rubbed all of the portions of the image and I think that I might have a good transfer, I'm going to hold my picture down in place. It's really important that you don't move it. Once you move it, it will be nearly impossible to get it lined up well. So I'm going to hold it in place and I'm just going to peel up a corner. And I can see that my image is transferring but it still needs a lot more rubbing. Sometimes it's helpful to go ahead and rub it with a hard surface as well. So I can go with the back of my lino cutter here. It's nice and soft and round so it's not going to tear the paper. It's going to rub with the hard surface and I'm getting a much better transfer now. Now you can see I have transferred the image from my paper over to my plate. Um, I may have moved a little bit of it. Some of it's looking kind of fuzzy. The areas where I used my thumbnail to go over it uh, transferred a little bit better than when I was using the soft part of my finger. So in some of the areas where I'm concerned that I might lose my image, and I've got it in there lightly, I'm just going to go back over with my pencil and reestablish that, um, those lines. You don't want to press hard with your pencil because you'll scratch the surface. And be careful when you're resting when you're resting your hand on any portion of your image because the graphite can rub off. Uh, in many instances, when you are transferring an image over, you'll get you'll get the opposite it will be flipped, like you see here, from this page to this page. The nice thing about doing it this way and drawing directly on top of your sketch with the pencil and then turning it over to transfer it is that you know once you cut it out again, your plate it's going to turn back over and it is going to stamp back just the same way that you had drawn it originally. If you were to lay your plate on top of here, with a transfer sheet, for instance, and draw over it, you're going to get, once you print it, you're going to get exactly the opposite image that you would have because you're turning it upside down to place it on the paper. Now I'm going to, what I did here, I untwisted the top. That loosens those little metal pieces in there and it allows me to slide my blade in and I'm going to screw it back in. And an important thing to remember in this kind of printmaking, I see a lot of students want to go in and cut directly on top of the line. It's the most intuitive way to do it. It's how you draw with a pencil. Where you put your tool, that's where the mark happens. So I understand why a lot of students want to do it, but in this case because it's a relief print, and everything that you are printing is going to be raised, like in this one here, you want to actually cut on either side of your line. So cut on this side and this side of your line. 
So if you don't want it to print, cut it out. So I start here and go around. And I cut on either side of the line. Now a minor a minor mistake is no big deal. It's something that we can repair with a paintbrush and a little bit of ink. So if you accidentally slip with your blade and you cut across a line you meant to be there, don't worry about it. If you make a major mistake, then your printing plate is thick enough for you to actually turn it over, transfer an image on the back, and start over again. But don't start over again unless you really need to. Okay, so I'm going to sit here and I'm going to cut my lines out, spend a little time refining the image, and then we will come back and I will do a proof print. Okay, so I have finished cutting out um, all of the portions that I do not want to print. So you can see that everything that is raised here um, are the lines from the image. So I am going to go ahead and proof it now. What I'm doing when I'm proofing is I'm taking a look at what I've got as it is. Because you can see right now, I've got tons of lines and grooves going all over the plate. And I have a general idea of what the image looks like. But until I actually print it, I won't really know what it looks like. And I may find things here and there that I need to work out a little bit more. So that's the purpose of proofing. I'm going to get... <clears throat> Just a little bit of ink and just put it right up here at the top of my of my plate. I'm gonna take my brayer and start pulling the ink down. Until I have a nice flat layer here. Now I'm going to roll it on my image here. And you can see that I've got a really good idea now of what my image is actually going to look like. I'm taking my paper and centering it as much as I can right now. It doesn't matter too much for the proof because this is not the part that you're planning to keep. This is just a test piece. And then I pull it up, and that is my image so far. <clears throat> I actually really like this pretty well. Um, I don't think that there's a whole lot that I want to change about it right now at this point. You guys can tell, I'm sure, from the sketch earlier, I omitted the little sucker parts on the tentacles of the octopus. It's really because at this size, that level of detail was very difficult to cut and I said never mind it's just too much if it was a bigger plate I would have included I would have included all the little suckers in there because I think that they're uh, they're an interesting texture or pattern in it but honestly as it is I still think it's pretty interesting looking so now what I'm gonna do is I might trim something like the corner portion right here and I think I'm going to trim this portion up here because I want, I think I, I think I want this border here to be a little more natural to the wave and the octopus itself and not quite so rigid like the rest of them. So I think I'm going to play with that a little bit and um, then my print will be done and that's about it. Uh, one other thing I need to say when you are cutting your lines, always make sure your hand that's holding the plate is behind your blade. You put it before your blade and your blade can slip. It does often enough, especially when you're first doing this and um, you can stab your finger and that hurts. Don't, don't cut towards anybody either. So if you've got a fascinated brother or sister and they're leaning over your plate watching you, tell them to move behind you and watch because you don't want to accidentally get them as well.